have you live there, ABC. Great. How are you guys up there? Oh, we're doing just fine. It's uh, the middle of our work, our work day. We realize it's early morning probably there in the United States and where you're located. Uh, we've uh, just completed lunch, and we're looking forward to an afternoon of work, and then we'll be going to sleep, and the uh, other ship will be getting awake uh, to carry on. Mars is one of the hottest topics down here on Earth these days. Have you folks been faxed photos from the Pathfinder mission yet? Yes, we have. From the very beginning, Mission Control sent us photos uh, via email, electronic photos, and uh, uh, although I'm sure we can't share in all the experience, we do feel like we've had about uh, uh, five or six photos. Uh, we know all about Barnacle Bill, Bill and the other rocks, so we uh, we have had the opportunity to share in that experience and, and enjoy it just like the rest of Jim, you've been to me on a previous shuttle resupply mission to the station, and you're currently on America's oldest shuttle, Columbia. The hardware is getting older for both countries. Are there more concerns for problems these days on flights? Well, certainly as any mechanical device gets older, you have to in improve and increase the amount of maintenance. But uh, uh, Columbia is the queen of the fleet, the oldest vehicle, but still she's got many flights left in her. These vehicles were designed uh, according to specification for 100 flights, and I think we're only up to number 23 right now. So uh, as long as the people at the Kennedy Space Center keep maintaining her to the uh, uh, to the standards that they have in the past, and they do a superb job, we'll keep flying her uh, for a long time to come. What do you see when you look out the window? How far can you see? Can you see the Earth and what we're doing down here? Yeah, we can see the earth, we can see roads and cities, and uh, runways stand out really well. We've seen uh, exciting things like Aswan Dam and Aegis on the Nile River. We've seen mountains. Yeah, we can see a good bit. That's unbelievable. What is it like to be in space? What does it feel like? Well, one of the sensations you can liken it to is being underwater, where you're kind of floating underwater. It's um, you're free floating all the time, so you don't have a good feel for which end is up. But um, I mean, so that's kind of physically what it feels like. As far as mentally, I just find it fascinating. I find the whole uh, space exploration program fascinating, and looking out the window at our world. Is, is very exciting for me. What does a typical day like? What do you do? <laughs> yeah, it's uh, like a typical day on Earth, pretty much. We get up in the morning and uh, wash up, shave, brush our teeth, uh, have a quick breakfast, and uh, we have a, about a half an hour uh, time to do our daily planning. We'll re review messages, uh, mail, and uh, kind of get ready and prepared for the day of work. We work in the lab uh, module here about five hours or so in the morning, uh, have an hour off for lunch where we look out the window, and then it's back for about another five-hour session in the lab. Uh, at the conclusion of the day, we have about two hours before we go to bed. Again, you're using that kind of getting ready for bed, brushing your teeth and uh, changing your clothes and looking out the window and just relaxing a little bit. What is the, your favorite part about being in space? to any of you, and then the opposite, what is your least favorite part? Well, I'd say the uh, two, two most favorite parts. One is floating. Floating is really fascinating because your whole method of movement is different. You just push yourself gently. You try to stop yourself from rotating. You have to watch that you don't bump into things. You maneuver around people and objects differently. So it's, it's like being a fish or something. It's, it's like being in a completely different world because you move differently. The other great thing is just looking down at the earth. I mean, the views are spectacular. The way things look, seeing the whole part of a continent at a time, it's just breathtaking. And it's just one great view after another when we have a chance to look out the window. Speaking of looking... I'll take a stab at the least favorite. The... Uh, just as the lack of gravity and floating is, is a fascinating thing, it, it's also sometimes, to be honest, a little bit of a pain. Gravity can be good for a lot of just normal uh, functions. Eating food, for example, you can't set something down on the table and present a meal to yourself all at once. You have to eat like one entree at a time, eat it in its entirety, and then move on to something else. 
I think uh, the problems of going to the bathroom might be uh, immediately obvious to anybody who gives it a thought. So uh, the lack of gravity is fascinating, and also it, uh, gravity is good for a lot of things also. Any special messages for anyone back uh, at home here on Earth? Yeah, I have a uh, two-year-old son, Kai, in Houston, Texas. He's probably just getting up and getting ready to go to daycare this morning, and I just want to tell him I love him. I think on behalf of the whole crew, uh, the whole crew, we have, we have a lot of people uh, who are watching, hopefully, uh, uh, this TV uh, downlink, and uh, to all our loved ones and to all our family and all of our friends, uh, we'd just like to say uh, thanks for hanging there, in there with us. Uh, we love you, and uh, we're going to be back home soon, and we certainly enjoyed this opportunity to be in space, and we're going to enjoy getting back home also. And I'd like to say hi to Augusta, Georgia. Yeah, and I'd like to say hi to Deborah Aston, New Jersey. Yeah, they put me on the spot. West Monroe, Louisiana. Hello. <laughs> All righty. Uh, anything else going on with the experiments that you think we should know about here on Earth? The combustion work is going extremely well. Uh, we had planned to do about 150 burns, uh, total combustion experiments up in space. We've completed over 165 already, and we're not done yet. So uh, I think we're getting you know, over 110% of our science output. In the material science world, world we're processing a lot of semiconductor materials and, and other uh, new metallic materials, metallic glasses that have, have other uh, technological applications. So. We have a lot of breakthroughs we're working on here. It might be a few years before uh, they find their way into uh, everyday life down on Earth, but this is uh, basic research, and we're pioneering out here, and uh, a lot of great science uh, will be performed on this mission. Any message for budding young astronauts, especially women, trying to get into the field? My biggest message is dare to dream. Follow your dreams, follow your heart, and strive to do your best, and you never know what you might be able to exceed if you j succeed with if you just try. Okay, we've got a little bit of tape here. We'll roll it for you and let, uh, let Greg and Susan talk about it. What I'm trying to demonstrate here is that uh, there's no up and down gets very confusing. Here I'm sitting here. Obviously, up is up and up is down, but uh, we can switch that around very quickly and see that Actually, I was sitting upside down. I was sitting on the ceiling of the space lab. And it's only when uh, Jim turns the camera around and we see things in their more normal configuration, for those of us who are familiar with it, that we can see that I was upside down. Uh, Susan here is uh, looking out the uh, aft windows. And now we're moving on down to the uh, hatch, down to the mid-deck, which is on the opposite side. So we see that she was actually lying on, sitting against the back of the... Uh, flight deck there, and now we're heading on down to the mid-deck. Looks relatively normal here. My uh, one crew member sitting on the floor. Of course, now when we see Roger upside down, it becomes which, ceiling, which is the ceiling and which is the floor. It all depends upon what particular way you're facing at that moment. Jim's assisting me with a... I, not really an experiment. What we're doing is we've drawn water out of the galley. It's called microbial capture device. We are shooting the galley water through a little filter, and we're going to let that filter sit around for a few days. We've added a little agent to it, and every 48 hours I'm going to take a look at the filter to see if things are growing in our galley water. This would be used if, for instance, uh, one of us were to get sick or something, they would be able to know whether the water had been good to drink. It's difficult in zero gravity to get all the water out of the filter, so I'm having to use my imagination and try and get the water to go where it's supposed to go. In uh, 1G, it just sucks right out normally because of the gravity. We got one internet question today who's from from uh, John Michaels, who's from Bay Village, Ohio. It's one of our suburbs just west of Cleveland, where my hometown is. And he asks, does zero gravity have any direct effect on the principles of magnetism, and wants to know if uh, steel is more drawn to a magnet in space than on Earth? And 
And uh, John, I got uh, two spherical magnets here on board, and I want to show you. It really has no effect. I'll uh, separate them and let you see how they float together. It's very similar to uh, what you would expect if you put two magnets, spheres like this, on a, on a flat plate. They would probably be drawn together. Uh, but in zero gravity, without uh, any friction, uh, it's very visible. But essentially, zero gravity has no effect on magnetism. It's a totally separate force. OK, that's it for this uh, for our afternoon. Once again, thanks to Mission Control for uh, being there for us and to Huntsville, to the Payload Operations Control Center. It's a great flight so far. We're looking forward for a few more days of science before we come back home. See you later. Next question, Alan, is uh, is there any reason to wait on the peak cap time for starting this next CM1 burn, or can we start a little bit early here? Space Lab Huntsville for Greg. Looks like we would like to wait until 1,400 hours. That would get started about 10 minutes early, but not yet. OK, copy that. I'll come back about that. Copy that, and I'll look into the answers on your other questions and get back to you later.